Hey folks, I just wanted to give you an update on the simple multiband compressor. The script is done. Let's take a look at what we're working with. And I wanted to give you an overview of what this, what we're going to build in this, um, what we're actually going to learn how to do in this course. Um, I get to start production over the next couple days, which is very cool. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting this out into the world. So without further delay, here is the uh, simple multiband compressor down here. This is the one we're going to be building. It's based off of like the actual finished one here. So the color scheme is a little bit different. Um, that's all, you know, at the end of the course, we actually start talking about that stuff. Um, let's see, let's get some audio running through it. There we go, we can see that. Audio's running, all this stuff is turn toggleable, bypassing whatnot. Um, all these controls are um, adjustable, which is very cool. They affect all the parameters. Um, anyway, uh, enough about this. Let's go check out um, what we're going to be learning. Okay, if I head over to the script repository, that's over here. All commits. All right, let's go down to the bottom. So the first thing we cover is the parts of the audio plugin. The next thing we cover is the uh, how compressors work and what parameters get used. Um, then we cover saving and loading parameters. Um, and then we add a compressor. Um, in this process, we're going to get a compressor added to the project. It's going to start doing some stuff. Then we're going to add parameters. We're going to add the ability to bypass it. Uh, we turn it into a component, um, the functionality into a component that we can repeat. Um, and then um, the next thing we do is I go over the roadmap of like, here's all the stuff we're actually going to build. And then um, we start building those things, you know, making it easy to look up parameters. This is one of the flaws with the juice audio parameter value tree state is the way we have to create our audio parameters and then access them after they are inside the APVTS. Okay. Then we start adding our filtering. You know, how do we split the audio into separate bands? Then we um, start implementing that. Um, we add the ability to solo the bands. We add the ability um, to... Let's see, we discuss more theory of how this works and then we actually implement the three filters. And then um, we start adding compressors for each of those bands. And then we add um, a solo mute and bypass functionality. And we clean up all the GUI, uh, clean up all the DSP stuff, and then we go on to the GUI. Now for the GUI, this is where we um, uh, this is where we build some placeholders first, and then we start uh, implementing separate projects, separate chunks of the GUI. So let me switch over to the standalone version, so I can show that. Um, let's see. I wanted to change this color real quick to. Let's just make this um, blue violet background. So I'll just do um, light blue, like that. All right. Let's check out the standalone version. Let's go back over here to this. Um, okay. So we start building our global controls. Then we customize, then we bring in the sliders from Simple EQ. Then we um, add the attachments so the sliders actually do stuff. Let's pull up this GUI. Where is that? That's way over here. Okay. Um, let's see. Then we start dialing in the, um, the global control positioning. That's these guys right here in the middle. The input trim, low mid crossover. That's this orange line here. The mid high crossover. That's this right here. The output trim. And then we start adding our um, start adding the other elements to it. You know, the label pairs that display the range of the parameter. And then we um, kind of clean it up and we add our titles to it on the top like that. All right. Now we start adding the band control sliders. That's these guys right here. Then we add the um, uh, what do we start doing? We start adjust. We start you know revising the graphics a little bit. And then we add the attachments, which connect these guys to the parameters. So when you adjust the threshold, it actually um, modifies the compressor instance and whatnot. Then we, um, let's see, we start creating the ratio slider because this one is slightly different. This slider right here is different than these ones in terms of how it works and what it displays and how we pull that information out of the audio parameters. Okay, next, oh, this should be pushed. This needs to exist on the remote. So that way I can have a script on the on a different computer if I needed. Next, we start adding the button attachments, which is where we get these. Um, well, first we add these buttons, the bypass, the solo, and the mute buttons. And then um, we connect them to the band. And all of this is just focusing on one band at a time. 
Then the next thing we add are the band switching buttons, which are these buttons on the left here. So we got the low band, the mid band, and the high band. And then one of the big problems uh, that we focus on is um, making them reflect the uh, state of the band. So if it's bypassed, it's yellow. If it's soloed, it's green. If it's muted, it's red. And making these buttons, you know, reflect that state. And then also making it so when we click one of these, um, you can't be muted and soloed at the same time. Um, like that, you know, just making it intuitive to use and the logic that goes with that. It's a really cool problem to solve. It's pretty interesting. Then the next thing we do is we add our spectrum analyzer. That's this part here at the top. Then we uh, figure out an accuracy problem, which is really cool. This is a very interesting problem to solve. Um, let's see. Then there's a few more bugs that get fixed in the um, in this part of the spectrum analyzer. Then we start tweaking the graphics for the spectrum analyzer, making it use the same module background thing. Then we make it um, we adjust the labels. Um, let me see. Uh, the labels here are different than the labels from the simple EQ. If I pull that up real quick, let's go back here. VST version. Um, we'll wait for that to appear. All right, so we're looking at the simple EQ versus this one, these two right here. So you can see these labels here are different than the labels here. It's also a different size, but it's effectively using the same internal guts. The same information is happening inside. So that's one of the things we focus on is how to make the spectrum analyzer from this class, from this project, more usable um, in other projects, okay? Then we um, start using the, uh, uh, then we start, what do we start doing next? Let me move this over here. I'm gonna put that there. Then we start drawing our crossovers. That's these orange lines whenever we adjust these sliders here. And then we start drawing our thresholds, which is uh, the yellow lines whenever we adjust a band. Here I'm adjusting the low band threshold, okay? Then uh, the next thing we do is connecting up this power button. Again, this is the same thing that we created in simple EQ. So we're just reusing some stuff here. And then we do the uh, bypass all bands button, this guy right here. And this is a cool problem because there are three sides to it. Number one, when we click this, uh, we need to bypass all the bands. Number two, when we uh, bypass one band, bypass two bands, and bypass three bands, we need to update the state of this button. And then number three, is well actually it's just those two things um oh the, sorry the third thing is if we go from having all bands bypassed and then unbypass one of the bands we need to turn this back on so three different problems that need to be solved which is cool so that's what we got bypass all bands uh update the band select buttons from the global bypass and then um update the global bypass toggle state uh whenever we change a band's bypass status. And then the last thing is this uh, color scheme helper which makes it. Uh, let me go turn that on real quick. Turn this on to true. This is a bit of a hacky feature but it's really cool the way it works. Um, it kind of breaks how juice live constant works but that's fine. We'll be able to demonstrate um, for the purpose of this. Yeah, this is the part I'm talking about how it breaks this but it's fine we explain the reasoning behind all of this, if we go back to our audio plugin host, where is our GUI for this one? Oh, it's right there. Okay. So this guy, we can adjust these. We can click on this and we can adjust these sliders and it's going to change the color of the GUI. Obviously it's not, it's not, um, doesn't persist, but um, this is, you know, it's one of the cool things that we get that I get to talk about is like, how can I make this um, a pretty easy, um, a pretty way to kind of dial in the GUI colors of your projects. So this one right here, this is adjusting. I put this over here. This is adjusting the the border color of the sliders. So that's what we see going on here. All right. So this is like, you know, kind of an overview of what happens in this uh, course, which is going to come out on Free Code Camp. I'm really excited to share it with you. Um, it's all in preparation for building this thing right here. This is the big one. Um, if I push play, let's turn on the Spectrum Analyzer. This is the one where it's got all the features. You can adjust these manually. You don't have to use these buttons. 
Um, you can drag the crossovers like that. Um, you can you know mute these bands. You can solo the bands. Um, all this kind of stuff. It's a much more. Um, it's got a dynamic number of bands, which is really cool. You can change the number of crossover bands, which is very cool. Um, this was a super interesting problem to solve. Um, and I'm excited to share with you if you decide to take the course for Project 12, um, the solutions for this. The other features that this has is you can apply processing to the side signal only, you can apply it to the mode signal only, to the right signal only, to the left signal only, or you can apply it to the stereo. And while you're tweaking this stuff, you can solo it so you only hear uh, that stuff. Okay, um, I'm super excited about this course because there's a ton of stuff that I learned in this that is really interesting that I think anybody who's um, curious about audio software development, um, there's a lot of really cool problems in this that are uh, super interesting to learn. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting this out of the world for people to uh, learn from and consume and in integrate it into their own projects and whatnot. Okay. So thank you for taking the time to um, check out this video and learn more about this upcoming free course for Free Code Camp, which is coming out um, once I can start shooting. Um, yeah, uh, this should be out in the next couple weeks. It really depends on um, how much time it takes me to put this stuff together. Thank you to all of my customers of Cordy App. Thank you to all of my students in Programming for Musicians. Um, if you have any juice questions or consultations, feel free to grab a free product from my website and uh, chat with me directly in the Slack workspace for um, Simply Q, Language Fundamentals, uh, Day 1 through 7 experience. All right, I will see you in the next video. Thanks again for tuning in. Later. <laughs>